Hello everyone. If you remember from my previous lecture, working with uh, arrays and vectors is not necessarily easy. For vectors it's much better, but still there are lots of things that you cannot easily do by basically using a single command. And you have to write loops and you have to perform basically the coding uh, yourself. And that uh, basically is going to waste your time when you are um, trying to work on an algorithm. Instead of paying attention to the details of the algorithm, you have to use a lot of your time basically writing code from, uh, for everything from scratch. That's where we use libraries. And one of the libraries that is particularly useful for linear algebra is Eigen. It's a very useful library that you can get and download. And uh, for more information about it, you can go to the Eigen website. That is an amazing library that you can perform anything for linear algebra. So there are lots of different types of uh, variables here that you can define. Matrix, uh, basically XT, matrix XF, matrix XI matrix 2xi, 3xi, and all sorts of things, and you can see their definitions here. So if it has matrix, then it's a matrix. If it has 3, then it's a 3 by 3. If it's 2, then it's a 2 by 2. If it has f, it means it has float numbers. If it has i, it has integer numbers. If it has c in it, that means there's some numbers could be complex numbers. So if I say matrix 3, CD means 3 by 3 matrix that can have complex double numbers, okay? And this is useful, this complex, when in general you're looking at eigenvalues. Some eigenvalues of a matrix could be complex numbers, right? So uh, there are all sorts of things that you can see here, all sorts of matrices, right? And vectors and so on, row vectors. So there are all sorts of variables that you can define. In order to use this uh, library, you have to include uh, eigen slash dense. And then whatever type of uh, variable that you want to use, you have to basically use, use the word using, eigen, double column, and then the type of the variable. So here I'm going to use matrix of uh, doubles, right? Vectors of doubles and vectors of complex doubles in general. And I'm not going to limit myself to 2D or 3D, so I use X, so they can have any general dimensions. And of course, uh, STD standard for iOS 3. So let me show you some of the things you can do over here. For example, if I want to define a vector, right, that has three rows and one column, all I need to say is V1 is 3 and 1. You see, the definition is much easier. I'm not going to use two brackets. I'm just going to pass the dimensions into parentheses. And when I want to define it, I don't need braces. I just need this uh, this uh, out stream basically symbol, right? These two uh, less than symbols. And just with spaces, nothing else, I pass the numbers. Then it takes that 4, 6, and negative 2 and place them here. And that forms your V1. Now, if you want to see V1, you don't need to use any for loop or anything. Just say... See out v1, and when you do that, then as long as this v1 is a vector xd, which is belonging to Eigen library, then it is just going to show all the contents for you without any for loop. You can multiply that vector by a scalar like times 2 and show the result. You can get some of all of the numbers in that vector and show it, or you can get what? The product of all of the numbers in v1 and show it. This vector has all sorts of objects as you can uh, sorry uh, methods as you can see sum prod you can get the average of the numbers in that you can get the minimum number in it by min coef or the maximum number in it by max coef you can get the uh, magnitude of the vector using the norm uh, method and you can get the length of it using size right so let's go ahead and run this first portion so you can see the result and when you compile it and run it, it takes a little bit more time, right? Because it has to get everything from that library and so on. But I'll tell you it worth it. It absolutely worth it to uh, not write a loop or a function for each and every one of these tasks. 
Okay, so that's V1. As you can see, it has three rows on one column, four, six, negative two, and then V1 times two, you see? So that's this line 19 and 20 running without any problem. Some of the numbers in four, six, and negative two is eight. The average of those numbers is 2.66. The smallest entry is negative two. The maximum, if you do it, is gonna be six, of course. The norm, the Pythagorean norm, or uh, sorry, the Euclidean norm, or the Pythagorean formula, which is four squared, six squared, negative two squared, under the square root added together. That is uh, the uh, norm, the length is three, right? And then here, I can show you that you can define another vector similar size with three other numbers. You can show it as V2, and then you can, that's another uh, method that you have, dot or the cross. And this way you can do a dot product between V1 and V2 or cross product between V1 and V2. So here my V2 is 3, 1, negative 1. I dot product it with this, so you get 3 times 4, 1 times 6, negative 1 times negative 2, and of course the result should be what? should be 20 right so you see i can easily do a what a dot product now if you want to define a matrix again similarly you define the a variable to be of type matrix xd and you provide the size here and there are two ways that you can pass the entries of a matrix either you just pass them all separated by comma and then it goes row wise and fill the matrix so it goes, and since it's a two by two, it puts the first two numbers in row one and then the second two numbers in row two and so on and so forth. So it fills the matrix from this given array row by row, or you can give it entry by entry, right? So you can say element zero, zero is three, element zero, one is four, one, zero is five, and one, one is what? Six. So you see here, you can basically define it in two different ways. So here I'm going to show matrices A and B and then I can add them together or I can subtract them from each other as long as they are the same dimensions, right? And I can show the result as a single command, C out C1, and that shows the entire matrix. So that's what you can see here. That's matrix 1, this is matrix 2, and then when you add them together, corresponding entries are added together and this is the sum. And as I said, you can easily what? You can easily do the uh, product here as well, right? So this is sum and uh, uh, plus and minus, basically, summation and subtraction. Can you invert a matrix? Yes, as long as the matrix is a square and the determinant is not zero, you can invert it. And again, you can use dot invert method and you can invert the matrix. How do you know the determinant is not zero? Well, guess what? There is a method called determinant, and that gives you the determinant of the matrix, right? So here you can see that. This is the inverse of the matrix, and this is what the determinant of this matrix. And you know, if you do 1 times 4 minus 2 times 3, the determinant is what? Negative 2, of course, as you expected. And what else? So we have inverse, we have determinant, uh, we can get eigenvalues. The only thing you have to pay attention for eigenvalues, since they might be complex numbers, you have to define them as vector xd, not just vector x, uh, vectors xcd, not vector xd. Because these are double numbers, but these are what? In general, these guys can be complex double numbers. So you say vector xcd, not xd. And you use the method eigenvalues, and it gives you all of the eigenvalues, which for this matrix are these numbers. One of them is negative 0.3, the other one is 5.3. You can multiply the matrices together as long as the dimensions match, right? Of course, for matrices, we don't have divisions. You can define as, and uh, all you need is to just say A times B, right? So you see an asterisk is enough to perform the product, as simple as that. How easy it is to write it that way instead of what? Four loops, right? Because you have to use nested four loops to perform a uh, product between matrices if you are not using this. So basically when you do that, the library is doing that nested for loop, but if the code is already there, you don't need to worry about it. And it's already tested and it's working fine. Then you can make special matrices. So what you can do is 
create a new matrix XD and call it whatever you want, A, B, C. In this case, I call it matrix zeros. And then you can start it with all zero numbers using the method called set zero and give it a dimension. So I want a matrix five by four with all zeros. Or you can start another matrix and fill it all with ones. Its dimension is four by three and it's all ones. And you can show them over here, right? So this is the five by four zeros and this is what the four by three ones, right? So you see, I can make a special matrices or you can create the uh, identity matrix. And for that, you need to use double uh, column. You cannot use a dot anymore. So you say the matrix, double column, and then identity. And then you provide the dimension again. And this kind of give you a four by four identity matrix, as you can see over here. So that's if you want to do what identity matrix. And uh, you can partition a matrix or get a block of a matrix. You can use the method called block. So here I have the identity matrix and I get the block of that, the portion of that. How? I say the top left corner is at 0, 0, which is position row 1 and column 1. And go for what? Go for basically to 2 and 3. And this is the results that you can see here. Look. Basically, you are getting this portion, first row and second row, first column, second column, third column, right? So you have two rows and three columns, and that, those are these two numbers, right? Go from position 1-1, one, one, right, or the top left corner, and grab two rows and grab what? Three columns, and that's exactly what you can partition a matrix and grab that portion of it and finally you can apply the method dot transpose and you can transpose anything for example if i transpose this i'm gonna get this one right so you see by a simple dot i have dots uh, inverse dot determinant dot eigenvalue dot transpose dot block right double column identity dot set zero dot set one you see how many useful things are available in this library if you want to do linear algebra or more uh, advanced matrix manipulations. So this eigen is absolutely something I recommend you download and use. So hopefully this video was useful to you and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you.